And I'm going to show you one more way to make a spout. There are all kinds of shapes of spouts, but this one is worth mentioning because you'll see this on a lot of uh, uh, teapots that you see that come from Korea, China, Japan, so forth. So I've got way more clay than I need for a spout, right? I'm going to throw it off the hump because it's not going to be very big. So I'm going to make a little doorknob shape right here. This is just going to mark where where the bottom of the little thing is going to be. That tells me how far down I should probably... Whoa, I may have sunk that too far. Let's see, let's push that up a bit. There we go. So I'm going to throw what's probably going to look like a little cup or a bowl, and it's not going to be real deep, and it isn't go and it's going to have kind of a narrow bottom to it. It doesn't come to a point; it just comes to a point and then curves back up the other side. Uh, it'll be kind of rounded at the bottom. So I've got way too much clay here. I think I'm going to just pull this up and cut off some. And I'll slow my wheel down. For those of you that don't know why you slow your wheel down when you start pulling a wall up, it's because centrifugal force tries to take over. And it'll lay this it'll just lay the sides of your your clay wants to go out so it'll just lay down if you're not careful now well, let's get rid of this much right here that's a lot of clay to cut off i really misjudged that okay so here we go i don't want to you know, since this is going to be a spout i don't want it to make the teapot fall over so i'm going to get really under there Here we go, coming out. Top edge. So you definitely want to compress that. You don't want to flare it out too much. You'll, you'll be able to flare out the part you want. All right, so I'll be trimming some of this, but I'm not going to trim it now. I'm going to take it off of the bat, and I mean the hump now, and put it somewhere where it can set up for a little bit. I'm going to slow this way, 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 way down. So I'm just taking one of my little knives and I'm going to be sure to cut underneath that. So once I get it off of there, and that's what the, let's see if I can do this, that's what the inside looks like. And I'm just going to set it down over here to set up for a little bit and then I will be trimming it and putting it on a pot and I will definitely bring you in on that. Okay, now I have I have trimmed all the excess off of here and kind of got that rounded. And I can just sponge it off if I don't want the throwing lines or the trimming lines in this case. Get it fairly smooth.
I think that's adequate. So the next thing you want to do is cut it in half. And how are we going to do that? With our trusty <clears throat> cutting wire. So you're going to get on top of it and make sure that you have it centered pretty much. And I'm just sawing back and forth. It's hollow inside, so the only thing you're cutting is the is the um, outline of it. So there's the half that's going to create a spout. And I may have to dampen this. I may have to, you know, dunk it in the water to soften it up so that I can bend this in just a little bit if I want to, or bend it out. So we'll see. So I'll let this sit up, and then we'll start putting our teapot together. So what to do with this? Let's see what we can make out of this. Surely we can come up with something you can do with about a half a pound. Let's see. I can't get where the sun isn't shining in my eyes. I know. Listen to me gripe about the sun. I've been griping about there being no sun for two weeks or three weeks or something. And, but I don't want it in my eyes. I'm trying to do stuff. I'm trying to be brilliant here. Now you figure out, you see if you can guess what I'm making here. I guess I better slow it down. Yeah, it worked out. No, it's not a shot glass. So it goes down to there, there, grab one of these things. Now, what other part of this can we use here? We may need to switch to... Yeah, we 
देते हैं A miniature bird bath. Good guess. Not. <laughs> okay, let me work on this. Whoa. Okay. So we're going to cut this off right about there. Where there it is. Okay. That ought to do it. Well, let me see. Let me narrow this up a little. I think I can also have you got it yet? All right, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna, in case you haven't guessed yet what it is, I'll show you one that has been uh, finished and dried. Do you recognize one of those? It's an eye washer. So once I have the top part built, all I have to do is cut out some little um, scallops from each side and sort of shape it a little bit. And you have to do that before you have to do the scallop and shaping before it gets completely dry or or of course you'll destroy it trying to fix it up but there you go and I'm just gonna cut that away part of the work on this and see I just cut a very shallow scallop there Part of the work on this can be done with a sponge and your fingers. So you wanna get them as close to the same on each side as you can. And then take take the sponge and start to work on that to get it nice and smooth because this is going to go if anybody uses one of these it would go up in that tender eye tissue around your eye so you don't want any sharp edges you want that edge to be really nice
So you got that all nice and smooth. You can take your finger, a wet finger, and sort of push push the uh, ends out a little bit because you want those to be a little bit flared. Remember that this shrinks. You just might look at that and say, oh my, what big eyes you must have. But remember it shrinks and the eye socket is what you're aiming for, not for the size of somebody's eyeballs. So the occipital uh, socket is what you're going to try to fit. So it may look a little big for you. Or for anybody. So there we go. There's that. That's pretty well done. And might check it again when it gets a little uh, dry, more dry. Since I threw this on the hump, the bottom of this is a little... I didn't take it off very well, too, either. Whatever. And so I'm just going to straighten this out before it gets so hard that I can't do it. Okay, so so we've got that pretty flat. You want to definitely rake it across some sandpaper or something so that you definitely get it flat so that it doesn't wobble. You don't want it to rock. Let's see if I can... There we go, until it feels kind of level. And then let it set up, because you basically, you basically have that oval shape to it now, and that's gonna be a cute little thing when it's fired and glazed, or glazed and fired. So that one's ready to let it dry. Look at it from the long way to make sure that you have it pretty, pretty even. <clears throat> also, I want to show you that on this little eye washer, your, your stem is probably going to be pretty solid. So it's always good to, to drill a hole. Be careful not to, you know, be careful to judge the distance so it probably, the bottom of this is somewhere above this little ring right here. So on your hole, let's see, you want to be sure that you don't go too far into that. Now, if you get something that's about a half an inch thick, you're probably going to be okay. I would say more than a half an inch thick you're in danger of having it explode in the kiln. So reduce the amount of clay and avoid cracks and blowing up by drilling, drilling out the bottom. Okay.